HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the anchor desk to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Hiller's Hockey reaches the sectional semifinals round. Assistant Town Manager Elaine Lazarus stopped by to talk about some of the upcoming zoning bylaw articles at this year's town meeting. And Matt Clark will fill you in on the upcoming HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. But first, the Board of Selectmen received an update from Representative Carolyn Dykema and Senator Karen Spilka. Massachusetts Senate President Karen Spilka kicked off the legislative updates at this past week's Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, okay, um, just legislatively, um, you know, I think all of you know, just for in terms of revenue and local aid and, and Chapter 70, just a real brief overview. And then I may just mention a couple of things that, that I'm focusing on. Um, the jan through January, actually now through February, today we got the February uh, revenue numbers that we are uh, under benchmark. Our revenue is not coming in exactly the way that we would have wanted. Um, most of it is capital gains, some of it is for budget, so we're trying to be cautious with what we do with uh, funding uh, things to finish up this year as well as for next year. Uh, but we did base um, and build a budget on a 2.7% revenue increase from 19 over 20, which would start this uh, July. You know, as you know, the governor came out with his bill proposal, budget proposal in January. The House will do theirs in April, Senate in May, and then hopefully our conference committee can work it out and have a, a state budget by the end of June. Um, but the state's fiscal health actually remains strong. So uh, we were above benchmark for February, which helped you know bring us up. We think a lot of it may have to do with the federal tax changes that occurred that would have been filed in, in December and January, normally under our process and is being extended for several months because of the federal changes. Um, we so. Overall, our economic outlook still remains good. And, um, you know, in talking with the governor, they're not worried yet, or administration and finance, about the dip in, in revenue and <coughs> being under benchmark. State Representative Carolyn Dykema started off her update by talking about public transportation. The transportation conversation is definitely something that has, has escalated recently. I think the congestion on the Mass Pike has reached new levels. And if you look at um, the statistics that have come out, that, that sort of bears out. And I think one of the uh, downsides of an up economy, it's exciting to have all the jobs, but I think there's also a, a commensurate increase in traffic, which is challenging for anyone to go into town. And um, one of the things I've been focusing on has been the commuter rail. I know there are a lot of commuter rail riders here in Hopkinton. Uh, I personally have two commuter rail stops in my district, the one in Southboro. Uh, and the one in Westboro, and uh, of course at Ashland, I know is, is used frequently by Hopkinton residents, and uh, we do not have the reliability nor the frequency that we need to have uh, given the economic opportunity here in Metro West and given the number of commuters that we have going into Boston. Um, I thought I would mention a couple of uh, local things that we've been working on. So there was a senior property tax exemption for here in Hopkinton that I know was passed at town meeting, and we worked to get that passed in the legislature, and that was done, which was uh, great to work with you folks on that, uh, signed by the governor in August of 2018. 
Um, I also filed, uh, many of you know I'm doing a lot of work on veterans, and I've, that's been since the beginning of my tenure in the legislature, and I work very closely with the VSO, Sarah Bateman, who is a regional VSO here and works closely with veterans. And uh, there is a uh, fund, a veterans fund, that allows uh, for certain uses for uh, monies collected through the town to go out to support veterans' needs, one-time needs. Um, including uh, oil, for example, and a few other things. And, and in meeting with the veteran service officer, we found that there are some needs, specifically legal cost and short-term rental assistance, that are not currently allowed by the, by the state law. So I filed some legislation that would expand the uses um, of those funds here locally in all the towns um, served by our, our VSOs to do that. View the full legislative update in the March 5th Board of Selectmen School Committee joint meeting broadcast. Hillers Hockey entered the Division III South sectional bracket as the 11th seed, but that hasn't stopped them from making some big noise in the postseason. Here is a look at the playoff run so far. On Thursday, February 28th, the 11 seeded Hillers took on 6 seeded Bishop Stang in the first round of the playoffs. First period, the Hillers struck first. Off of Colin Walsh. Number, and there's a goal for the Hillers. A great feed to Hamlet. Went off to stick a Walsh over to Hamlet. And the Hillers are up 1 to nothing with 4.35 left to go in the first period. In the second period, the Hillers strike again. Sean Walsh feeds it over to Kyle Rogers, and Rogers feeds the net at 9.38 left in the second to put the Hillers up two to nothing. Third period, Steve Simos gets a good shot off, and Jake Weinstock deflects it in with a backhander, and that made the score three to nothing with 7.28 left in the third period. Simos with the assist, Weinstock credited with the goal. Later in the third period, the Hillers struck again. Hamlet racing in. George Seamus now. Simos with a shot there, and that ends up in. Fourth goal of the game for the Hillers, and they take the win four to nothing. Hillers went on to the second round on Sunday, March 3rd at Gallo Arena in Bourne and battled third-seeded North Quincy. Hillers took the game 3 to nothing. Tommy Hamblett had a goal with 4.23 left in the third period, and then Steve Simos and Sean Walsh added open net goals to secure the win. Goaltender Cole Thomas had 16 saves. Senior goalkeeper Cole Thomas has 31 saves overall in the playoffs and has given up zero goals. With the win, the Hillers advance to the South Division III sectional semifinals and will battle 10th seeded Coil Cassidy on Thursday, March 7th, 5.30 p.m. at Gallo Arena. The winner of the semifinals game will play the winner of 9th seeded Ashland and 4th seeded Bourne on Sunday, March 10th at 3.15 p.m. at Gallo Arena and the Division Three South sectional finals. Still to come on HCAM News, Elaine Lazarus joins us in studio, and Matt Clark gets you up to date with the latest HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. This week on Attitude, Ariana introduces us to the Marathon Man, Mike Obagimi. Okay, so you're not doing just the Boston Marathon. No, 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 <laughs> At least no. you're getting some other yeah, uh, smaller yeah, events yeah, in, in yeah. there. Yeah, a couple, you know, some 5Ks. I just recently uh, did a, a, a local race that's, God, I think they said it was their 40th year. Stu's 30K. It's an 18.6 mile run that goes around uh, watches at Reservoir. This week on HCAM, Enter Stage Left Theater presents 
ESL Live. In a recent conversation, Paul said religion is a hoax aimed at mindless zombies with no self-concept. Perhaps this is the source of your anxiety. So I'm Nappy here, and I am with Elaine Lazarus. And uh, Elaine, for those that don't know, can you explain uh, what you do here for the town of Hopkinton? Um, a longtime planner with the town, currently assistant town manager, and working with the planning board on this year's zoning changes. And I understand there's uh, a lot of zoning changes being talked about, a lot of public hearings are happening. Uh, can you talk about what some of the big topics are right now? Sure. Um, just wanted to mention that the planning board has, is required by law to hold a public hearing on every zoning change regardless of who submits it. So this year the planning board's proposing some and the, there are several citizens petitions. So one of the, the um, the most important perhaps are changes in the Osmond Overlay District, which is uh, applicable to legacy farms. And some of those changes um, try to unravel some of our language that contradicts each other and some housekeeping changes. And others um, allow um, just a, a better administration and management of the uses that are there. So for example, uh, we have some language regarding senior housing. Um, and it's a currently a project under construction off at Legacy North. And um, the zoning requires over 55 uh, and no children under 18. And it also requires affordable units. But the state um, will not certify affordable units where children are prohibited. So we have to resolve that language one way or another by changing the affordable housing um, restrictions or changing the age restricted restrictions. So that's something that town meeting will get to get to think about. Now, is there a public hearing coming up on that? There is a public hearing. Uh, it, uh, the public hearing opened on February 25th. This particular topic um, wasn't discussed, and that was continued to March 25th. So on March 25th, uh, the public will have an opportunity to, to weigh in on that. If people can't attend, they can send me an email or send the planning board an email or a letter, and it will be uh, reviewed by the board. And uh, what do you think the overall feeling about this is? Do you, do you feel like people are going to support this zoning change, or do you, do you feel like that it's going to get some uh, pullback? I don't know. I, I expect every zoning change has its pros and cons and that those will be discussed and we'll see where it goes. But people are entitled to participate and voice their opinion. And uh, what are some of the other uh, zoning changes going on that uh, you feel are going to be uh, a, a big topic at the upcoming town meeting? Well, there are a couple of citizens' petitions that try to get at the issue of managed growth. And what those petitions are proposing is to limit the number of building permits that could be issued. Uh, one of the articles proposes a one-year period, and the other one is over a three-year period. So uh, and during this time, the town would be um, doing some planning and thinking about how it's going to manage growth. So those are citizens' petitions. Those proponents will appear at the hearing and make their case. Uh, and the public will have an opportunity to weigh in on those. And when are these public hearings happening? March 25th uh, at Town Hall. March 25th That's at Town Hall. 7.30 p.m. Terrific. Um, and just uh, kind of looking at all these uh, zoning changes, there's certainly been a lot of uh, public hearings that happened uh, this past week. Uh, could you talk about the outcome of some of those public hearings that we just saw uh, this past week? Sure. Um, on the 25th of February, the planning board held their first hearing. And at that uh, meeting, they decided to pull the articles relating to uh, educational uses and restaurants in Industrial B District. So those have been removed from the warrant. Um, they decided to go forward with the temporary banner article and to make some changes to that. Uh, they decided to, um, with respect to that, they decided to limit uh, banners over streets to Route 135, Route 85, and West Main Street, and to allow the increase, or to propose the increase in the maximum size of banners. And then um, they also, uh, there was an article proposed to change the uh, definition of restricted land at Legacy Farms, and they decided to uh, proceed with that one, so they voted to, to recommend that one to town meeting. It's a housekeeping article. It makes our language consistent uh, with other language already in the bylaw. And I see one that uh, regards car washes uh, here. What happened with that? So that one was discussed, and the board um, uh, was open to the idea of expanding the area in which car washes could be allowed to um, 
to the uh, industrial A district, which is South Street. Uh, but at the same time, uh, car washes are presently allowed in the downtown, and they're thinking perhaps as we allow it in on South Street, we can remove it from the downtown. So that's something when it, they want to talk about more uh, on the 25th of March. So perhaps we'll have a car wash in town soon. It's perhaps uh, we allow them now, but perhaps we just don't have the right the right land, the right the right market. So we'll see. Absolutely. Um, and now there's another one that involves uh, indoor recreation. It, it looks like perhaps maybe an indoor sports facility. Uh, what's going on with that one? So the proposal is to, um, to expand the areas where those uses can be allowed. So right now they are currently allowed in one zoning district, and the proposal is to allow it in an additional district, just to increase perhaps the likelihood that someone would want to have um, an indoor athletic facility, recreation facility of some kind. So the use is already permitted. Um, it's been that way for a couple of years, but no one's taken advantage of it yet. Well, it should certainly be interesting to see where all these uh, mm -hmm. articles go. And um, we're getting pretty close to town meeting, just a couple months away. I'd imagine uh, you're pretty busy. Uh, what, are, what are some of the things that you're doing right now as part of your uh, job with the town of Hopkinton? Well, uh, part of the job involves um, helping to prepare the entire warrant. So there are a lot more articles that would be uh, at town meeting, uh, from the financial side to general bylaws to land issues, street acceptance. Um, so working on coordinating and, and uh, getting all of that set for people. So one of the other things the planning board will be holding, a, actually the planning board doesn't have a hearing, but the board of selectmen will have a public hearing on street acceptance. And this year the planning board proposed that we accept Penny Meadow Lane and um, Hunter's Ridge Way as streets, as uh, public ways. Is there an overall feeling about uh, those being accepted as streets? Uh, they were uh, created on subdivision plans approved by the planning board. Uh, they appear to have been constructed in accordance with the plans and so pending any um, issues that come up it looks like um, they might be okay for acceptance. And um, of course, people can go to hcam.tv to see all these uh, articles uh, listed on the website. But also, I understand the town government uh, website has a lot of resources if people want more information about any of these upcoming articles. Yes, and as additional information is generated and becomes available, we'll put it right on the website. All right, Elaine, well, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us today. You're welcome. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, March 8th at 5 p.m., local artists, poets, and musicians gather to share their art in a special open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. An old man sits and stares at relics of his first war hanging on the wall near pictures of his kids who've grown up and now are gone on monday march 11th at 7 30 p.m the hopkin and planning board meeting will air live on hcam tv and also at 7 30 p.m on hcam ed Dr. Kavanaugh sits down with Assistant Superintendent Jen Parsons to talk about the English Language Learners Department on a new episode of Highlights from the Hill. We talked a little bit about kids coming in at different levels of proficiency. Yes. How do you determine that? What lets us know if a student is level one or level six or whatever level they might be? Right. So we, we have a number of screening tools that we use, um, some at the beginning of the school year when we have new students arriving and we do a preliminary screening with our newest students. Um, and that gives us a sense of where they are. On Wednesday, March 13th at 6.30 p.m., Mary Arnott chats with Hopkinton Historical Society's marathon runner, Mike Hovergimian, about raising money on a new episode of Attitude. And at 7 p.m., the HHS Drama Ensemble performs their production of Radium Girls on a brand new HCAM Ed special. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Ice Hockey Playoffs versus Coyle Cassidy will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. 
Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton community calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton related video, photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. The Cops for Kids with Cancer organization, in coordination with the Hopkinton Police Department, presented Hopkinton Middle School student Gabriel Sanchez with a $5,000 check to help his fight with cancer. We're from Cops for Kids with Cancer. We're a small charity basically out of Massachusetts. It was a charity started by a Boston police officer uh, who has since passed away, but, um, and it's been taken over by almost all policemen and retired policemen. What we do is we raise funds through different, you know, golf tournaments, uh, uh, bingo nights, those type of things, you know, small scale. We pull all our money from all the police in the state, and then we get um, people recommended to us who need some help. Either a policeman recommends you, or a social worker recommends you. And uh, he's been recommended, and, you know, we agree to help this family, and that's why we're here today. We only have the resources to do eight families per month in the whole of New England, actually. Um, and again, you know, this is where we like to be. Um, what we always start off with is that, going back to what I said, it was started by a Boston policeman. Even though, you know, you're Hopkins police, I happen to be state police, the, um, we give a Boston Whoa. police patch, <laughs> so whenever he looks at it, he'll realize, the, you know, these guys That's did it. That's right. <laughs> but, you know, we represent all police, you know. Uh, and then we always start off with, we uh, always give everybody a beer, Aww. and, uh, you don't have to, you can hide that, you don't have to bring it back to school. <laughs> <laughs> that was my I'll one concern to the chief. <laughs> I said, I'll take it home. I said, Chief, if he has other guys here, I mean, we're not giving him the beer. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you what happened is, I was similar 10 years, 15 years ago, and my friend who happened to be in the New Jersey State Police, him and his wife come to my house and bring me a five foot Mickey Mouse. I still can't hide that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm, never, I'm never sure when he's gonna show up, so I can't put it in the cellar. And then we give you a shirt, one of our shirts, a Coffee Kids Cancer shirt. Ooh. Now you don't have to wear these things, it just tells us who we are. And if you wear ball caps, we give you a ball cap, you know. And we have a few other things here, and uh, even for, for all the policemen here too, and I, I always bring pens. And, um, and that, you know, that's the same one that I have on my lapel in front of Mark, too. The chief. Thank you, sir. We've done uh, 669 families. Wow, that's uh, incredible. For over $3.3 million. That's uh, incredible. And uh, a great part of it comes from the marathon, which Billy's in charge of. Oh, yeah. You know, raising so. money from the, from the marathon. Mm -hmm. So we have a great fondness for Hopkinton. Absolutely. And, and Boston. <laughs> and a great fear of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing worse than coming here at 7 o'clock in the morning on race day <laughs> and not being paid. Yeah. Yeah. I did the marathon in Boston for 40 years. Wow. Uh, the first one was uh, they did it at the Lexington Hotel and they gave the guy a wreath yeah. for his head. <laughs> and that was all we got. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's going back to when he started as a policeman in 1948. <laughs> Don't laugh at him. <laughs> Don't encourage him. Don't encourage him. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, this is the first time I've ever gone somewhere when he doesn't look like the professor there from uh, Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> He's cut three inches of hair off. I don't know why. <laughs> but no, we, you know, we really hope that everything goes good. You know, you can contact, you see all your friends running all the place. So you, if you need anything, you know, they're the ones you want to go to. And if you have anything in the hospital, 
you can go to me because I'm there all the time too. Oh, you know, thank the, um, you. you know, I'm, I'm usually there once a week. Or the chief too. We're usually there once a week in Dana Faba. Okay. And maybe twice. Usually, for but usually as a bumper sticker, cops or kids with cancer, and I say. What police officer would give you a chicken if you had that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to send it to us and we'll get into the family. <laughs> but I always mention maybe the state police would. <laughs> yeah. You're right. <laughs> uh, he's tough on me. Uh, he teaches me everything I know, but I'm not going to repeat that. Uh, I don't think I haven't done this before. I've actually left and brought the check back with me. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, oh, Rhode Island one time. They wanted one of those six foot checks. Yeah. Oh, I gave him the six foot check, and I never gave him this check. <laughs> and you can't cash, you can't that, cash so. those. Big when guns. I call them up, I, they goes, We didn't know if this is what you brought to the bank. <laughs> it would have been funny in the bank. They would have, What are you talking about? <laughs> Wolf in the window. That's what you uh, But she would get you in there too. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Okay, and then so, that's the help you definitely get better. that Xbox. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Correct, was a big help on putting this together yeah. for our game. So. Well, she's been amazing, yeah. and yeah. So. I will. It's, you guys are amazing. Never mind. That's right. <laughs> you, I don't want to start crying, but yeah, no, everybody in it. this town has been amazing. It's. I know I won't stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's actually one year this week that Gabe was diagnosed. That's true. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um. So he's he's come a long, long way, and he's been he's okay. been amazing, yeah. amazing. Huh. I won't cry. I won't embarrass you and start crying. You just say yes. <laughs> but, but you can still hide the baby before you go back to school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mom, will take, Mom will take that for you. So you got to <laughs> back uh, months ago when we uh, grew our beards in November, um, that was to raise money for breast cancer and cancer. So the police association wrote a check for Gabe for three thousand um, dollars yeah, to just help offset some of the travel expenses so um, there's also cops and kids with cancer and I thought that uh, Gabe would be a great candidate for that and so I applied uh, through that for him in which he would receive the award so um, with the help from nurse Burke from the middle school we were able to uh, Fill out the application, we sent it in, and we were notified that uh, Gabe was a uh, recipient of it. Thank you. On Thursday, February 28th, the 11 seated Hillers took on six seated Bishop Stang in the first round of the playoffs. First period, the Hillers struck first. Off of Colin Walsh. Number, and there's a goal for the Hillers. A great feed to Hamlet went off to stick a Walsh over to Hamlet, and the Hillers are up one to nothing with 4:35 left to go in the first period. In the second period, the Hillers strike again. Sean Walsh feeds it over to Kyle Rogers, and Rogers feeds the net at 9:38 left in the second to put the Hillers up.